is up guys welcome back to live travel asia where we show you what it's like living and traveling in asia right now i'm on the free shuttle to icon siam which is the brand new spanking mall that opened up right here in bangkok we're gonna go ahead and check out how that is but before we head over there i just wanted to let you know that there is a free shuttle on this boat from the South Thorn Pier by Sap and Toxin BTS. That is gonna be the most convenient way to get there and it's a free shuttle, so I highly recommend you take advantage of it. <laughs> it's playing Frogger in the river, but this place is really iconic. You see Labua over there. That's the famous abandoned building. Over there is Asia Teak. And across the river are many famous hotels and Icon Siam is over there. Okay, I'm finally starting to see a little glimpse of Icon Siam. I'm pretty impressed and as the locals would say it, oh. Basically our initial impression, the curb appeal of Icon Siam per se. That's pretty impressive, huh babe? <laughs> what the heck are you wearing high heels today? <laughs> uh, but <laughs> this place uh, really takes it to another level. I mean it is by the makers of Siam Paragon, which is currently my favorite mall, but oh my gosh, all this glass, this crystal bling bling, it's like Really, really, really another level out here. Look at that. They're polishing that crystally glass over there. Okay, so I'm not a big uh, connoisseur of luxury brands, but you think they have it covered? Mm -hmm. So we've been to the premier shopping locations like in Korea and Taiwan. I mean, compare this to Lotte World Tower or Taipei 101. What do you think is better? I like Taipei 101, actually. Oh! <laughs> but, but let's see what they have here. I mean, Taipei 101 and Lotte World Tower has the, the, the scale factor. I mean, they're in like the world's largest buildings, you know? But this place has like this ambiance. I mean, I, I think this is a place that even tourists should come to because it has a distinct Thai feel. Maybe it's from all this gold everywhere, this gold color, um, this marble, this opulence. Oh, it's marvel of architecture. Mai is pointing out that we're at the more casual section. H&M. Zara. Takashima. Takashima, yeah, Takashima, yeah. Somebody's been raving about Takashima, yeah. It's from Japan somewhere. And uh, I don't know. I, I started walking in there and she's like, I'm not interested in the clothes, I'm interested in their food. <laughs> so, okay. Electric waterfall. A luxury seating area for the pop pops that are flipping the bills. <laughs> Electric blue. Okay, so how do you top CM Paragon's luxury car dealers in the malls? You just make them bigger. And now for the ultimate icon of luxury, <laughs> Apple. Well, it's no secret that Apple is big out here in Thailand, but this is apparently the first official Apple store. But Apple employees here have Thai-themed 
outfits. It's cool. I mean, they're really, really hyping this place up as a first Apple store in Icon Siam. I, I, I can see that they gave them the most prime piece of real estate. But I guess what better way to convince people to get that new iPhone to take those selfies with out here. Ooh. Yeah, there's a sound. Shaking, they have a vibration. Oh, they even got like Bose outdoor speakers everywhere. Oh, my, my, just real. I thought it was a sprinkler. <laughs> so we're just sitting down here in front of the Apple store, chilling. I don't know if they did this by design, but you see the the glass walls behind us. That sort of like blocks any of the really really harsh like wind, and it creates this subtle gentle breeze that like funnels through that area. But it's pretty ingenious. It's really chill. That it, it has like a Almost like a Getty Center feel. Like I want to have a picnic out here. Like yeah, plenty of seating. Um, I, I know a lot of people are afraid that it's gonna be super crowded out here. But I mean, of course, we're here on a weekday during like working hours. So if you come during this time, it's it's pretty reasonable. I mean, on a typical day at Paragon, it's far more crowded. Um, yeah, but I was just thinking of all these things to say, like. Icon, right? It's icon. like I, the icon of what Thailand wants its yeah. future to be, whether or not you like it or not, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> or the icon of uh, American capitalism <laughs> alive and well out here. Those, those, <laughs> those, the condominium will be skyrocketing. Oh, that's true. Oh, hi, building. Please use this bag again, 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 again. You you really need to use it like a hundred times for it to justify the nine hundred baht price tag. Nine hundred ninety. That's sort of what I don't like about capitalism. They monetize everything. Like they monetize the value or the symbolism of like being green. So if you have money, you can be green because you can afford vegan food or you can afford <laughs> overpriced plastic bags. Uh, uh, anyways. I was just admiring those people, but they just announced that they're gonna do some kind of floral performance. So we're gonna go try to check that out. Uh, can't calculate the zeros, Mayu says. So Mayu was just commenting, next to Maserati must be Rolls Royce. And voila, she is spot on. Check that out. Alright guys, so originally I was gonna have Mayu do this transition scene over there and then this looks just as good so uh, a little trick of editing makes you look like we're traveling a lot here in the mall but it's just like very compact. I think it might be even smaller than Siam Paragon but it's just there's just so much more opulence and things to see here. Um, yeah, that, this is, we're sort of walking around in circles and trying to cover every little bit for you. Fluffy, fluffy, fluffy. Cleansing form for your face. Oh, I just want to put it all over my face. It just feels so. Good. Uh, we, we heard there was a performance, so we assumed it was here, but uh, we can't figure it out. There's so many places I guess. We heard there's a performance somewhere. Is it over here on M floor? Along the river, sir. Oh, where's the river? Downstairs, uh -huh. and then go straight on. Along the river inside a mall. How could we miss that? I guess. Okay, let's check it out. Oh! You don't need to go to Dinky Smelly Riverboat Market. You got artificial air conditioned ones here. Oh! Okay, this may not be the most authentic, but I don't know guys, I sort of like this. I mean the water is a bit more clear with the lighting, it has this hazy green feel still to it. But you still do have all the traditional foods, it's just very sanitary looking. You can just uh, chill by this artificial river and enjoy these 
fruits. Yeah. Uh, if I had to nitpick, I will say that this little walkway is a bit narrow. It's definitely not for your American size. Seriously, I think I see more authentic Thai food than the actual floating market where they sell like souvenirs. These are actually legit Thai snacks. Map to navigate this place. This looks like a little miniature town. We're gonna explore it a bit more. Oh, pretty authentic how they refill the hot water and stuff too. So picturesque here. Oh, oh. one more. Oh, oh. What the heck? Did you guys catch a glimpse of that? There is <laughs> an elephant out here. This has like a real local market feel. It's just in AC. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Gotta close my mouth. Like I'm just like pretty awestruck. Uh, I didn't really do too much research about this place. I mean, all I knew was what was on the Bangkok Post, and they're just talking about the iPhone store. And I'm like, why would people want to come here? But oh, look, legit! I've never seen a macadamia shell. <laughs> You're gonna stop eating this. I know. I know. I know. The, have you heard of the macadamia nut scandal on Korean Air? They stopped an airplane over it, I wow. swear to God. Is it Look a at this. Is it a meal? Oh yeah? This Same. is like the Thailand Costco, they got so many cool samples. <laughs> Look at this. It's this is a banana leaf flavor. Oh, banana leaf flavor, babe. They say it's the same feeling as mochi. We gotta get the Japanese to try it. Oh, this is... Oh, man. Oh, charcoal. Charcoal. Mm. Wait. Oh, okay, I'm, I'm gonna try this. Oh. Guys, this is like 60 baht, two dollars for just this. Oh. It comes wrapped up in like legit banana leaf things and that's what's inside and you got a bunch of them rolled up in there like cigars. That's cool. Like he's like, don't touch it. Eat it right off the banana leaf. <laughs> that's that's how it's supposed to be. Oh okay, thank you. Mm. It's pretty reasonable the price. I mean I I've seen it about roughly that price, even when I buy a central. And I've tried tons of these like snacks. And this place legitimately has like the most refined taste. Like there's this, I mean you would think that this place is going to be more artificial, but um, the other places, like when I have it, I can tell that they use like a lower quality sugar or oil or something that gives it this really bad aftertaste and that's why I don't really like these Thai snacks, but this place, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's more artificial or maybe it's more traditional. I'm not Thai, I can't tell. But I can tell that I prefer this much more because it has a much more refined taste. It doesn't have that grimy aftertaste. So this place is pretty local. I think they use locals because um, he's telling me that this is his father. That's her royal high... I'm not sure her her actual title, but she's basically the princess, princess. right? Royal Highness. Her Royal Highness, right? Yes. And then that's him right there. Right there, <laughs> with the snacks, continuing third generation. Oh, he's so cool. He he, uh, he gave us some. All right, you guys definitely have to come oh to this place. God. Let him know that uh, you know you came from Live Travel Asia. <laughs> wow, this is like a roti place. I've never seen it like this sanitary though. So we're walking around checking out like the prices. And the prices aren't that bad. Like a roti was about 50 baht. So it is definitely reasonable. And these merchants, they don't seem like they're just some people that work for, you know, Icon Siam. They're actually legit vendors that are out here uh, selling their stuff. I, I think this is quite brilliant. I think what they're doing is um, like every mall has like some kind of a draw to bring in the tourists and the foreigners who like spend the money and you know like Terminal 21 has like the really awesome food court I think I think this is the draw for you know your tourists the food is very authentic it's very local and the, the price is not bad at all and it's also indoors so it's super cool 
like you're not sweating you can enjoy all this food and like oh my gosh I think I need to come back here and just do a food vlog this is I could this is like street food I could do like it's sanitary it's an AC I can fully enjoy the flavors I don't have weird like smells that are screwing with my taste buds um, it, it's like I'm actually really impressed with this place. Oh my gosh, I don't even know what some of these foods are. And Mai is telling me that this is Sukhothai style noodles. Oh my god. Okay, I'm not the biggest street food kind of guy. Uh, I'll, I'll put that out there right now. But even as somebody who's been out here for a while, like I'm seeing like new things because I think they did a really good job of sampling and curating a lot of the traditional Thai stuff. I mean, I'm not gonna say it's better than the authentic stuff, you know? Although I might actually just prefer the convenience of all of this, but... Oh, oh my gosh! Yeah, that, that's like... It, I think it's even bigger than the one we saw at Doi Sutet, babe. Oh my gosh! I mean, it's not as long, but like, the head and everything is much bigger. Okay, okay, I can already hear it. I can already hear the trolls, the ones that get filtered, so you guys don't really see. But it'll be in the hidden comments where <laughs> they're going, this ain't the real Thailand. But guys, I, I, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna fess up to it. I think this is pretty legit. I would, I would rather like come here to just sample all the foods than try to go to every little knickknack place. You know, if I only had a couple days to sample and get a little taste of everything here in Thailand. Just come here. It's very convenient. You get to sample all the little foods and you know at least the price that you shouldn't ever have to pay more than. Like, you know, a lot of people come here and everything is so cheap they end up like overpaying. But if you come here, the prices are relatively reasonable where you could sample everything and you know, okay, this is the kind of quality I should expect for this price and like you'll set you up for the rest of your trip. Yeah, I feel like this is the first time I've seen it. Maybe it's just because it's more sanitary and then I just never give second thoughts to buying stuff when I see it out there. Guys, if I just gave you like this shot right here, you wouldn't really even know that this is inside a mall. It looks pretty authentic. Whoa. This must be pork jerky, y'all. I've, I've recently started to like pork jerky. Oh my gosh, that's good, that's good. How much is this? If this is 10, 15 baht, we know it's legit price. That's street price. Thalai na krab? Sipa. For reference, guys, I mean, they sell that everywhere. Those skewers, I pay 15 baht at the local night market next to my condo. That, that, it's, it's pretty legit prices out here, for sure. Um, you're not getting ripped off. Okay, so on top of your street food area, you got your local souvenir vendors as well. I don't know where they find these people, but these products look very authentic to me. Like I've seen like the generic passport holders that other places have and uh, it's like this fake kind of leather and stuff, but I, li I like this material. They're using like from more Thai, Thai products. Chiang Mai, Thailand. Oh, from Chiang Mai, Thailand. Oh, that's why it's so unique. It's definitely nothing that I've seen in Bangkok. I've seen tons of passport holders. This is like a common souvenir in Bangkok. I mean, it, it is a bit more pricier, but I think it's totally worth it. It's not something that like somebody will just like throw away. <laughs> this, this I could like really see. I, I, I really like this one. I like that design. Monkey. Teddy. Aww. Figurines. Me and Mai are suckers for figurines, as you guys already know. Mai's checking out the flowers. They're like two dollars for a bouquet. Roses are expensive though, three hundred. I think I think I'll just get you some bamboo sticks, babe. How much one hour time massage? Okay, all right, thank you. Okay, so not everything is cheap. A time massage is six hundred baht per hour, which is more than twice the price. But they are renting. Huge real estate over there, so that explains why they probably can't keep the prices competitive. Okay, Takashimaya. Mayu keeps saying Takashimaya, so we're gonna go check it out. Uh, I really want to check out that place more. I think I want to just come back and sample and try all the foods and make a vlog out of it. But I I'm just like, Mayu, we need to get this done. 
I need to shoot all that first before I go to Takashima for like purposes of editing. I don't want to go back and forth because I want to try to get this out before this week so I could be like up there and have people watch it. Uh, but I'm definitely going to be coming back to this place. Uh, you could expect more, so subscribe if you're interested in life in Bangkok. <laughs> Is this chobap? What? Some kind of sushi salad? No, it's rice in it. Japanese ice cream. So for keeping prices local, this is definitely local Japanese prices. But they do look friggin' delicious. Mayu is drooling. Um, of all the really overpriced stuff that I see this Takashima area this is not too bad. Uh, about six, seven, eight dollars for these big bowls of salad. I mean, this is like the size of my hand, guys. It's just really big. Dare I say that that's a better value than even Okaju uh, that I covered in my Bangkok video game show uh, vlog towards the end. Point? Ten dollars? Three hundred baht? Not too shabby, actually. I don't know, I generally don't buy sushi like this at a grocery store. I'm like iffy about it, but being that this is... Yeah, like I knew Maya was gonna say it. Because it's Japanese, it's trustworthy. Siam Nakajima Sushi-san. Um, I'm sure this has really nothing to do with it, but just from an aesthetics point of view, this Japanese character is just <laughs> I don't know, give this more value even to my eyes. Ooh, I'm actually feeling this. This is a uh, 88 baht. A little less than $3 for these big rolls. Okay, so they have like some kind of free shuttles too. But this is like the Tonburi area that is like the local neighborhood where people have just probably hit a jackpot lottery. Their home prices have just probably skyrocketed. I probably don't think that was that expensive before they built it here. I, I mean, I don't think you can ever really, really know. I mean, you, you can sort of guess areas that could become popular, but you know, owning property here in Bangkok is almost like buying a lottery ticket. You might get lucky and they might build like a huge mall next to you and like your house will like quadruple overnight. Mayu is just uh... Still talking about Takashimaya! Japanese department store people. So apparently Thailand sent like an elephant and then they named it Takako in Japan. So somehow they're trying to relate like the history of Takashimaya with you know the heritage of Thailand. I, I, maybe that will like have Thai people like spend money and feel like they're contributing to the cause of Japanese-Thai relationship. I, I don't know. Why well, just pointing out how all the cars parked out here are like totally luxury. <laughs> it's so fancy. I've never seen this color for sure. I, I don't know if they stickered it, whatever they do. I like this color better than Porsche. Navy. <laughs> uh, yeah, so... You can obviously tell why they can charge like exorbitant prices out here because you got people paying exorbitant prices for cars. What's the 300 baht sushi? But you know what? It's not too bad. It's like that big bowl of salad. It's not too bad for like 250 baht. I know like these fancy malls, I'm, at least for me, I used to like be afraid to walk into them like thinking I can't afford anything in here but they just pretty much have some for everybody you got some for like the super rich people who can afford the expensive imported fruits from Japan eat like pears that cost $30 a piece and uh, you got like you know street food at a, a dollar a piece so it's all good I love it I love it it's like a clash of everything a contrast of everything Oh, look at the 7-Eleven, it's so bling bling. Golden 7-Eleven. <laughs> 7-Eleven rules Thailand. 
Uh, seriously, like, I heard the owner of 7 Eleven is CP, and uh, that CP guy, uh, I like, I, I recently looked at the ranking of the richest men in Thailand. CP is number one. I think that definitely exceeded my standard, like, 10 minute vlog time frame, but whatever. I mean, it's always not. It usually always goes over, it, but I'm like pretty amazed. I'm pretty taken back by this place. Uh, I'm gonna just go ahead and sign off right now. If you enjoy what you see, please subscribe, a comment, and like. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you guys next week for more vlogs about living and traveling in Asia. Thanks again guys for checking out our video and if this is your first time seeing us head over to our channel Live Travel Asia to see the wide variety of content we offer from our standard Live in Bangkok vlogs to our in-depth discussion videos about life in Thailand. You can also check out our new dedicated travel channel Traveling Asia for our international travel series and our gaming channel Live Game Asia if you're just as much of a dork as we are or just want to chat with us on our live stream. Whatever the case I hope you guys have an amazing week and I'll see you guys next week for more vlogs about living and traveling in Asia. <laughs>
to understand what's happening. She's a shopper. Oh, so she's the one who knew to do I this. Know, I, know, I know how to read English. Oh, oh that's right. It's, oh my gosh, just notice they don't even have it in Thai. It's just all in English. That's pretty fancy. It's like it's like a fan or something. It is a fan. It's so weird. I like it. I'm so mesmerized by this logo. Oh, this must be the fanciest looking true star. I think I think the, the red dresses on the girls look even puffier out here. Thirty <laughs> percent more puffier. Yeah, yeah. Look look at this. Look at this greenness. Oh my god. Like the best free co-working space right here. For those of you digital nomads, uh, Mayu says that she really likes this. It's probably French or something at overpriced. Yes, French bakeries. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, like that's some like legit cheese on there. That looks good. Well, the true store is even fancier than the Apple store, in my opinion. Guys, check that out. They got an outlet in every station. I think. Do oh yeah, it moves. So it moves out, so you can like put your laptop there. Oh, this is pretty cool. Look, there's there's literally shacks down there. I wonder if these people own the land. Oh my gosh, it's probably gonna be really expensive now. Oh wow, look, look, even more co-working spaces. They even got like lockers? Is that lockers or they're probably gonna display something or merchandise in the future. Alright guys, so I'm at my favorite level. This looks like it's the tech level. And you got Sony, you got camera stores, you got banana IT. Oh, I might need to actually get a hard drive. Oh my gosh, you're not gonna be able to see this because my camera isn't HDR, but... Oh, they're, 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 yeah, they're, this is beautiful. They're just admiring it. With, with, the, with, the, with the contrasting lines and anything, it's like, I want this, I want this tech in my life. <laughs> we need it. You guys are out here on a vacation and you wanna get more. <laughs> You're like, oh, thinking about what to get back home, right? Yeah. <laughs> Alright, you can like travel the world from the comfort of your couch. This looks so realistic right now. <laughs> but Mai's pointing out the price tag, 169,000 baht. Um, about three of these could actually legitimately get you a house or a condo out here. <laughs> Why you have me all excited about this Zeiss store, but it's like Zeiss Optics. <laughs> Not Zeiss lenses. <laughs> that is like the ultimate way you can <laughs> prank your camera loving boyfriend. Oh babe, they, they're gonna have the first Zeiss store. <laughs> Zeiss glasses, babe. Oh, it's so different. Uh, okay. Alright, uh, we're probably not gonna go down there, but they have this store out here called The Loft. I like that too because they have like the coolest souvenirs. It's a bit more pricey but when it's on sale it's cool. Like they also have this in Siam Discovery, right? Is it Siam Discovery? Basically the, the more hipster one next to Siam Paragon. So we know this store quite well. Check it out, you got Huawei. Huawei isn't bad out here. Overpriced, nice looking boba. So, quite popular with the women. Mayu tells me that this is Koi Te, but it's spelled like Koi The, but with a Te. Wow. Creative kids play for free. <laughs> Live, travel, Asia. Yay! I'm busy dealing selling new items. Oh my god. This puts my little mosaic to shame. Sakura, Sakura. So, something I've been noticing that's uh, definitely different about this place is that everything seems to be sort of run by Takashimaya. I mean, the department stores, all the major stores, usually it's like. Um, like Robinson's or what's the other place that's at? Like Gourmet Market, but I, I don't see any of that here. It's all Takashima. Why has been talking about this Toytopia place? Yeah. Ooh, you can like see up her crotch. Ooh, uh, I don't know if they did that on purpose and placed her over there. But ooh, they got Bane. Oh, that really looks like Will Smith over there. Wow, I don't know, that Batman looks pretty ugh, brutal. 
Yes, people are still into Harley Quinn. Thousand bucks. Sixty-five thousand baht. Yeah. Seriously, two thousand yeah. dollars. Wow, that's true. Look at that. Oh, figuring collecting ain't a poor man's sport. Marveling at this architecture here because these little circular things, it's like, um, yeah, it's floating. It's just supported by like one pillar. I'm sort of afraid that this is gonna like collapse or something, but yeah, it's like avatar esque kind of uh, techy future kind of setup. Interesting. Uh, just when I'm about to lay, Mayu wants to check out these glasses. There's, there's something happening though, obviously. You can see that. It's quite the frenzy here. Uh, <laughs> it's a bit hectic back there, but I'm gonna let Mayu do the shopping. I'm, I'm just gonna go ahead and check out something else. Oh, okay, so hidden away here, you got like, it's called Rose Dining, but it definitely seems like it's like the more high-end of the high-end dining places. I see Tim Ho Wan over there. Yep, pretty fancy. It's so fancy that there's people taking selfies along this path. Okay, so we are at the topmost floor as far as where you can go right now because they're still working on the very top floor and I think that's the theater that they're still working on. But here it's like the beauty slash food place. This is actually a famous chain here. I probably don't know how to pronounce it right. Chalako or something like that, but here it is. It's like the fanciest one I've seen. They do uh, like your hair. Fancy. They have Nara here. Um, this is a much smaller looking branch than the one I see at Central World, but I just wanted to quickly point this out because I never did a Central World video, but I think this is a pretty legit place. If it's like your first time in Thailand, you want a relatively fine dining experience and you don't want to overpay, um, this branch is pretty good. Like their dishes are around $10 or so, but it's really high quality. Yep, just to give you an idea of the top 12 Nara dishes, they're pretty legit. I don't know this restaurant too well, but I really like their decor. It almost makes me want to eat here just because it looks so fancy. Alright, check that out. That's a pretty chill cafe. I like it. Overlooking all this. I was like sort of disappointed because the Big Photo didn't have this here, but they have a separate place just to print. You gotta love these machines. You can like print your standard photos. They don't have any Thai now. Japanese? Oh really? It's just for English. English and Japanese people. Wow. This is the USB stick. They actually even have like a photo app that you can use to upload the photos from your phone. But I just always carry this. Simple print moment. This is more. Right, so I mention it in my little pro tip section of my Tabi and Bomb vlog, and I'm not sure if I'll release that before or after this, but. Just a little bit of photoshopping skills could save you a lot of money. That only cost me 14 baht. Usually when you get like this many pictures like printed out, it's gonna cost you like 200 baht out here. So just photoshop a bunch of them into your standard like 4x6 stations and then all the big camera stores have it. So I just tend to just print them out. They're only like 7 baht each. They're so cheap. I'm bedazzled. <laughs> Balls are cute, my you said. Oh, wow, it's like, yeah, it's moving based on the music here. This is cool, there's, there's a bunch of spectacles to be had here. Uh, but we've decided we're gonna leave now <laughs> because uh, it's movie Wednesday and we wanna watch a movie and we're gonna go back to Rama 9. You know, as great as this place is, as spectacular as it is, I still like my uh, Central Rama 9. <laughs> uh, I got my membership card at Yayoi, <laughs> and I'm feeling Japanese food today, so <laughs> I'm gonna have some Yayoi. Um, yeah, I don't know. But if, if you're into Thai, this, like I mentioned, this place has a lot of authentic food. Uh, we will definitely come back here and, and try more stuff, but 
Yeah, we want to try to beat the rush hour traffic. So, we'll sign off right here. Bye bye. Alright guys, I was just gonna call it a video, but I just remember what one of my Patreons, Nick, said. <laughs> he said he likes these talking segments at the very end. So, uh, yes, I do please, try to please my viewers. <laughs> uh, let's see, what are we gonna talk about? Hmm, Mayu. Uh, what is your overall impression of Icon CM now? Seen it all. Yeah, um, absolutely. Those those are like top places that we recommend tourists go. I mean, I wouldn't step foot in Asia Teak, but as a ooh. oh, there's a chef that's taking a photo at the peninsula. The chef is taking a photo right there. But yeah, that's definitely like a top uh, location for tourists to go to because it has like very touristy things, you know. And as much as we don't like touristy stuff, it's like. Well, that, that's what they come here to do, like, see ladyboys, I mean, they still don't have the ladyboys show here, like, Asian team, but, I mean, uh, as far as, like, you know, the souvenir stuff, and then, like, the local Thai foods, like, the touristy version, yeah, this is, I mean, in every sense, except for the drag queen show and the Muay Thai show that they have at Asian Teak. And then the, they have like a Ferris wheel. In every other sense, I think um, Icon Siam is superior. Like how they laid out the market, it looks a lot better. Um, the prices are far more reasonable. It's like, it's very reasonable. It's, it's basically local like Bangkok prices, you know? So, and the food though is top quality. It's like one of the best street foods that I've had here in Bangkok and I, I don't say that lightly because this is full of street food but it is sanitary it is low price it tastes delicious it seems like they really really try to um, curate like the best local street food over there and I think they're able to get the best because everybody probably wanted a stall over there at Icon Siam and I think I really don't think they're charging those uh, people a lot of rent to do that. They probably did it at a discount price so that they attract the best street food merchants out into this area. So, guys, I know it looks touristy, but the food is really legit. Yeah, you, you have to, don't take my word, just go there and check it out, you know? Um, so, yeah, this isn't just a place for... I don't know, for like rich people. It's like any tourist can come here and enjoy it. Um, any other things you notice? I like the great out. It's very interesting. They have a lot of glasses, windows, and nice objects you can take. Yeah. It's very iconic. The, 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 the Apple store. I love this. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that place is just full of glass. You saw like the whole front of Icon Sian is just glass. So the architecture is amazing. This 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 is the boat that we took to Icon Siam. Now it's full. But yeah, overall I, I really can't find too many negatives about that place. I mean once the movie theater goes up, I'm sure that's gonna be probably the like a really good movie theater. Um, maybe they'll charge a little more like Siam Paragon, like when we go to Rama 9, it's 100 baht, but Siam Paragon, it's like 130 or something. They charge slightly more. I'm really nitpicking now. One thing that I do want to sort of complain about though, and the reason why we're not eating our main course over there, is that over there it's the extremes. You have either the, the low-end street food or the really high-end um, restaurants but they don't have like some of the mid-tier ones you know like yayoi what's the other one we like sukishi like bonchon i mean if, you, if you're out here in thailand you know what those are 
Um, they're like the middle tier types of restaurants, but for like more locals. So they either have really fine luxury dining or very low end street food, which to a tourist is perfect because you know, you either want to splurge or yeah, you want something local. So I think that's great, but as far as you know, I'm starting to nitpick now. If I was living near here, I'd still be missing what we have at Central. Um, other than I, I really can't find any negatives. Yeah. Guys, I mean this this is a, a really nice neighborhood to live in. I mean the, behind me is across the river. They're really developing this area behind us. So I mean as you all know, Southbourne is just there's no real estate. It's super expensive. It's the most expensive piece of real estate in Bangkok, in Southport. So, I mean, that's why they're moving the new business district over to Rama 9, where we live. And, um, like, but however, they're developing like the residential areas behind us. And with Icon Siam, now it's like become probably the hot spot. I'm sure there's gonna be a ton of ties that are thinking, I wanna live over there now, you know? So, uh, yeah, I mean, I used to live across the river a little further up in Pink Cloud. Now, this place, I mean, that place sort of seems like a reasonable place to live. Now with Icon Siam and then them building the new BTS across over here. So, if you're like in the market to buy a condo or just trying to find a place to live, um, yeah, I know a lot of expats haven't focused too much on this area across what do we call this area by the way it's um, huh? Pomburi. Pomburi. that's right not a lot of like expats focus on Pomburi, but I think it's gonna be a new up-and-coming spot I mean this side of the river is also the, the side that is less likely to flood as well the land is a little higher um, it's just that it's been on like a side across the river and mass transport over here has been tough that bridge over there I think that's a Rama it's a Rama 8 or 9 bridge the one that goes from Kaosan Road 8 right that is just it's ridiculous the traffic is so bad but now they got the BTS they got Icon Siam god I, I, I wouldn't mind living here yeah I mean it sort of feels like Almost everywhere in Bangkok now, as long as it's relatively close to the center now, it is really all an attractive place to live. And just Bangkok overall is becoming a really attractive place to live, so I'm really excited about that. Um, as someone who has purchased a condo out here like three years ago, before <laughs> the prices are even higher now, I mean, at that time I remember clearly thinking prices are high, but it's just even higher now. And I don't know, I'd be scared to buy out here too if I was trying to buy a condo because how much the prices went up in the last three years but I was thinking the same thing three years ago that the prices went up so much since the other three years when my aunt bought her condo for like 700,000 baht so uh, <laughs> I mean I yeah I'm like super excited about my life here in Bangkok uh, they say you're the star so I'm gonna point at you <laughs> What do you think? I was looking at this condominium. There's two building right Oh! Yeah, that is a really nice looking condo. That's a Four Seasons, the new one? Oh! That one's good. And then we also noticed this, this condo. Oh my god. If I have any like rich, wealthy uh, subscribers uh, and money isn't an issue to you, please buy that condo over there or rent it and, and then invite us. <laughs> we will vlog about it. That looks so cool over there. God, I can't even count how many stories there are. That's, that's gotta be at least 10, 20, 30, 60, 60, 70. Man, that's like, you know, there was a point when in Korea like Yuksan building, 63 third. That was, that's, oh, that's so beautiful over there. Yeah. Oh man, I wanna live here now. I think I like this place better than Ari. <laughs> you have to see the local area, not only the Yuksan. 
Uh, we don't really go around the local area anyways. We just end up at the mall, do our little Wednesday thing, stay in our condo with a nice view. That's Bangkok life. <laughs> Uh, well, the other interesting thing is um, I started recording as soon as the bull started to move. So to get across this river and to Icon Siam, it's going to be about 10 minutes. I think it's it's going to be it was a lot faster actually when we left. I think it's probably about seven minutes, but. I think uh, this particular pier, there was a boat parked here already or something and they are waiting for it to like move out of the way. So that's why you saw sort of floating in the middle of the river for a bit. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's, it's real quick across the river. It's a free shuttle. Uh, I highly recommend that you hop on it. <laughs> How much is uh? By the way, there's like a really popular scam. If you go to the Grand Palace, I have had friends who told me they paid like two thousand two thousand baht to go on a super dinky like canal boat across here because, and they thought that's a bargain. But to us locals, we know like it's free or at most like when you pay, it's only like ten twenty baht. So don't ever overpay for these. Cruises or whatever. Yeah, that's just crazy money, guys. All right, all right, Nick. I I did this for you. Hope you're happy uh, with this little uh, podcast uh, section. Yep, I'm here to please. All right. So really signing off this time. Bye. -bye.